Hi everyone, welcome back. We are heading into episode two of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Just a heads up, the reason why there was a little bit of a break between episodes is that Janae needed some quality time with her family, which I think everyone needs. She plus, she also has exams coming up. And so in just to notify you all, we don't know when episode three will come out, but once it once we are clear on that, we will then go back into recording the episodes. So thank you for bearing with us, but also fighting to Janae, like she has exams. So please like show some support for her. Mm. But once that happens at the beginning of July, that we can then try and get back into a routine of watching the rest of the episodes. Of course, I will leave Janae's links to her YouTube channel and other social medias, and also to her Patreon, where we will be continuing on with Strong Girl Ponson. But on Patreon. So if you want to go over there or you want to support Janae, then please like, subscribe, comment and follow. <laughs> hey, thank God we've got Willow. Yes. Now we just see if the others survive. Uh oh. Smart, right? Smart. Yes. The question is, is he whole? They surrounded us. Yeah, no, I think he's definitely becoming a vampire or something. The world is older than any of you know. Yeah. Contrary to popular mythology, it did not begin as a paradise. Our vestiges, certain magics, certain creatures. And vampires. Okay, this mm -hmm. is where I have a problem. <laughs> See, because we're talking about vampires. Isn't that what we saw last night? <laughs> no. No, th those weren't vampires. Those were just guys in thunder need of a facial. Oh, oh no, um, it, could rabies. It, it could have been rabies. I, I need to sit down. You are. You are. Oh. Oh, Willow. <laughs> Waiting for the animals to die out. And the old ones to return. I love how we know implicitly that the animals are the humans. Oh, humans, we are cattle. <laughs> oh, Jesse. I'm very worried about him. You've tasted it. I'm your faithful dog. <laughs> you bring me scraps. I, I, I didn't mean that. I have waited. While you come and go, I am stuck here. I kind of love here. the fact that he doesn't have the deepest voice. We had more offerings, but there was trouble. They ran away. And there was a girl. A slayer. And that would be a what? For as long as there have been vampires, there's been the slayer. He loves doing this part. <laughs> right. That's true. The slayer hunts vampires. Buffy is a slayer. Don't tell anyone. It's big guy Luke. He talked about an offering to the master. Now, I don't know what or who, but if they weren't just feeding, then Jesse may still be alive. Uh, this but... might be the dumb question, but shouldn't we call the police? It is people. the dumb question, but we appreciate well, we you for asking us. we vampires. At the graveyard, they could have just fooled them. They can fly? They can drive. Oh. <laughs> I can't remember the Oh, look at the light in. Mm. This is much more preferable than the very dark. Congratulations, you've just been upgraded. <sighs> Where he's touching his neck. Yes. So, all the city plans are just open to the public. Um, well, in, in a way. When I accidentally decrypted the city council's security system. So mm, yeah, no. There's nothing here. This is useless. The access to the tunnels is in the mausoleum. The girl must have doubled back with Jesse after I got out. God, I'm so mentally challenged. Sandra, this is deeply dangerous. I'm inadequate. That's fine. Ooh. Wow, all his issues just rushing yeah. to the forefront. I'm, I'm a bit fuzzy, however, on the details. It may be that you can wrest some information from that red machine. She definitely could. She's smart enough. That was a bit um, British, wasn't it? And I understood um, every well, word. I Me too, luckily. Oh, sure, I can do that. 
Like with sunglasses. Yeah, I was about to say like this was. I, me, no, um, I'm just admiring the fence. You know, this is quality fence work. Because he's a terrible liar. He asked me to get a book for him uh, from the store because I have a free period and I'm a big reader. Did I mention that in my transcripts? That's the Buffy Summers I want in my school. Sensible girl with her feet on the ground. I mean, that sucks, but it's realistic. How, how long do you think she's going to take to jump that fence? She's like, that long. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone else thinks it's just a normal day. Nobody knows. It's like we've got this big secret. We do. <laughs> That's what a secret is. When yeah. You know something you guys don't. You mean we. We should get to class. Yeah. I... No, no, no. Hello? Yeah, Keep an okay. eye on him, please. Whoever's down there, I think she can handle it. Uh, I'm gonna start so I hate it. I don't suppose you've got a key on you. They really don't like me dropping in. Uh -huh. Why not? I don't know why, but Sorry, I just had the very funny image that he was like a priest. I'm putting up with those cryptic wise man act on a regular basis. Can you at least tell me your name? Angel. Unless you can prevent it. The master walks. I mean, so she actually should be doing exactly that. No, you your, your logic is not logic. Oh, great. Love that. <laughs> Does she have very good eyesight? Because otherwise she might need to bring a torch in the future. <laughs> Thunder, what are you doing here? Something stupid. I found mm -hmm. you. I can do nothing. But what can you do? No, you were supposed to sit at school and do nothing. No. Sandra, you're gonna have to. Yeah, I might take this instead of chem class. No, I'm sorry. I'm a wimp. We're staying in chem class. Where do I know this actor from? Merlin? Probably, yeah. Uh... Are we going to the bronze tonight? No, we're going to the other cool place in Sunnydale. Of course we're going to the bronze. Friday night, no cover. Where else can you go? What'd she do? She's busy. Shh. She's doing something else. Yeah, there's no way she would want to say that. Fun, right? Wait, I come out of the bathroom and she comes running at me, screaming with the sticks. I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna kill you. Ooh. I, I can't oh, remember that part. Girl. Oh, God. I thought she just slammed her against the. Did you hear about her old school? Yeah, it's exaggeration, isn't it? Hmm. Uh, because she's a psycho loony. No, she's not. What? Hello. Excuse me? Who gave you permission to exist? Do I horn in on your private discussions? No. Oh. Why? Because you're boring. Okay, so how do we save it? Deliver. Deliver. Oh, but that was so smart because it was like, yep. it was, I don't even think that was on purpose though, was it? I don't know. I mean, Willow did technically tell her how to do it. She just used deliver. Jesse. Oh, no. Maybe don't let Jessie. the human go first. Sandra. Jesse, man, are you okay? Oh no. Oh no no. No another way out. I don't know. Maybe. Come on. I don't think this is the way out. We can't find a way back to those things. What do we do? I got an idea. <gasps> you can die. Well, one for the yeah. gunster. Yeah. Jesse, we're buds, don't you remember? You're like a shadow of me now. Cool. That, that's how you do it. Up there. Use your jumping skills. This must be so surreal to see, though. Yeah, look at that. I would Maybe story as 
Scurry. <laughs> just scurry. Push Xander. I don't care. <laughs> oh, do you know what? You have to actually be thankful that Xander was there. She did need him. Yeah. I wonder if him drinking her blood specifically is somehow better than average human's, human's blood. Just means I'll be someone worth killing. Because she's a slayer. Mm. You failed me. Tell me you're sorry. You've got something in your eye. Ooh. Oh, uh -huh. I'm glad they didn't show that. And this feels so sexual. Yeah, I was expecting him to kiss his hand with the rate it was going. Was his eyes always red? Is your instrument. Yeah. Mm. It makes it even more creepier if you like get the second to look at it. Too late. And they were waiting for us. I don't like vampires. They take a stand and say they're not good. Uh, the mm. Spanish who first settled here called it Boca del Infierno. Which he translated Hellmouth. Hellmouth. Sort of um Or I mean, there was an earthquake that swallowed half the town and him too. See, oh thank goodness. Yeah, thank people. you, Earthquake. Mm. It's simply put, yes. And yet, yeah. this is what gets Peter's being held. Well, there, there are a number of possibilities. You're going to the Bronx. I mean, that would be the first place I would think of. Yeah, I'm actually quite surprised. I feel like now that he's not that enamored by Buffy, his, his brain is starting to take over again. Oh no, her mom's Mom, upset about her. Going out? I have to. I didn't hear you come in last night. I got a call from your new principal. Says you missed some classes today. I was running an errand. We haven't finished unpacking and I'm getting calls from the principal. Ma, but I have to go. No. <laughs> Ma, if you all say, I should get used to saying it. If you don't go out, it'll be the end of the world. Everything is life or death. Literally. I feel so bad because in any normal situation, like I would be supporting the, the mother. Anyway. It's like when I go shopping. I have to have the most expensive thing. Not because it's expensive, but because it costs more. Hmm. Mouth, Makes sense. It was oh, the same thing. Come on. Do you like get a jawline upgrade after becoming a vampire? I know, he's he, look how much better his hair looks like slicked back. Like he's like it looks like his jaw, everything looks different, doesn't it? Hello? Hey man brain, what are you doing? Harry is a vampire, he knows how to use hair gel. It's amazing the skills you learn just because you were bitten. Oh. She's like, she is generally like a kid in a candy store right now. Oh great. I'm I think I'm gonna be happy for the Ladies darkness though. I mean because then no it might spare me the grim visuals. I thought there wasn't any band tonight. I'm kind of intrigued to see how this is going to resolve. Like, is everyone just going to agree it was a mass hallucination? If they survive this? Next. How do you still have pearly whites after that? They should be full of blood. You're too late. I didn't know I was going to get grounded. Can you break it down? <laughs> no, nothing. Um... You're looking at the thing that killed him. Mmm. That's a good way to put it. Give me more! Don't get greedy. Yeah, even that one. Not fun Help being a van. No. <laughs> I need another! I just feel like he's doing Shakespeare at this point. Just on the stage. Uh. <laughs> she can't die. She's like such a good... Villain. Well, like high school villain. Right I'm down? here. That's so nice. satisfying. I mean, 
that's technically a stake that works. That makes yeah, sense. Yeah, it's wood as well. It's wood as well, so yeah. It's good that he's being distracted by her because no one else can do what he does for the master. Like, if he was genuinely smart about it, he would have other people take care of her while he continues to feed. Beheading, beheading, beheading! Yay! Heads up. Wow, I sounded very violent just now. Jesse, man. Don't make me do it. Don't give him a chance. We're gonna have to open up the front as well. I'm a new man. Ben, you're a dead man. Get off the bed. Nice one, Willow. Alright. Put me out of my misery. You I mean... God. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I know. What a way to go. There's something you forgot about, too. Sunrise. It's in about nine hours, moron. <laughs> Remember how you said it, stuff small? like that is way too early. That was so good. Oh, look uh, at that shot. That was such a good shot, but um, yeah, you guys better better run. He's not in the mood. I mean, I don't even remember that much, but I'm telling you, it's a freak show. I wish I'd been there. Shit, I'm there. So no, I'm. Yeah. I'll never forget it. None of it. Good. Next time you'll be prepared. Next time? Next yeah. time is why? The next threat we face may be something quite different. I can hardly wait. <laughs> Maybe you could blow something up. They're really strict about that. I was thinking of a more subtle approach, you know, like excessive not studying. <laughs> the earth is doomed. <laughs> don't, don't turn us off. Pause, go right to oh, the no. end. <laughs> That's what I wanted you to see. <laughs> so, there we have Janae. We have episode two. This was, when it first was released, was a two-parter. So these were released together. Mm -hmm. So everyone got to watch the episodes. Mm -hmm. For you, you've had to wait a little bit of time to see it. What did you think of episode two? Oh, there's a lot of thoughts. Okay, I'm going to try and be succinct about it. Um, it's interesting because it very much felt like this was all one episode. Like if you look at it in context, it's very much the way, especially the way they just finished it up. It, it very much felt like that, oh, more to come, uh, you know, kind of ending that first episodes tend to have. Um, mm. but yeah, generally I really liked the way that they, again, the world building for me and this is very good so far where so, especially like you mentioned, the references that they throw in. Um, now, obviously, a lot of it is pop culture references. But like, for example, I think something that I might not have mentioned in the first episode, I like the fact that they made the the vampires look like the the oldish vampires because mm -hmm. then it immediately tells you kind of more or less what the rules for these vampires are also going to be. So they don't need to fill you in on, oh, like, holy water and steaks and so on and I mean they did this in the second episode but they could get away with it only being in the second episode because they kind of like relied on um, the audience's knowledge of how the lore generally works which I think is nice and then also the little bit of world building that they did with like Buffy's uh, necklace for example they didn't have to explicitly state that crosses mm -hmm. were a thing in that moment because the fact that it affected them already kind of was like oh yeah so that is one of the myths that is accurate in this um so you know i like the way they kind of like threw it in there without really like spelling it out immediately um i also think another thing they did which is when you're talking about them in vamp face is to mm -hmm. so that you differentiate who's good and who's bad in this moment mm -hmm. so you know the bad guys look like this so you know exactly what they look like and as you said because they look like the vampires that we have an idea or the old world vampires like Nosferatu's so when you know that reference that's what you envision so you're like okay these are the bad guys we can see they're bad because they 
disfigured or disformed or transformed their faces into something not human. That way we can say, well, this person is the bad one and these are the good people. Mm. And it's, it's also good because like in a way they, it feels like I'm saying a pun every single time I'm going to say this, but they raise the stakes because um, like they established now with Jesse that it, as soon as you're bitten, you basically aren't yourself anymore. You've effectively died. The person that we, you would be associated with is no longer really that same person, um, which makes it really like you can't get bitten. It's it's basically like you're gonna be zombified. There's no no like going back from it. Do you um, remember in the first episode, Buffy does mm-hmm. say they have to suck on you and you have to suck on them. So mm-hmm. it's not just that you're bitten. You ha- like she explains it in the first episode. It's a choice. They, yeah. Well, mm-hmm. it's also you have to feed on them. So the vampire can bite you, but you have to also feed on the vampire to become one. So clearly that's what happened. Because if you think about it, they said he'd been upgraded to bait, but they didn't say he was going to live. They just mm. said he was bait. I can tell you now, when I first watched this, the two characters that I was so intrigued by by episode one was Cordelia and Jesse. So when he died, I was so gutted in that moment because I was like, he was the character I was with Cordelia most intrigued about. I really liked his character. Mm. But it is such a smart thing as well because it took out like someone straight away and you're like, oh, you know, like like who you think is going to be this core member is gone. But this is something that Joss Whedon wanted to do. He wanted to kind of shock you and be and like, you know, someone that you think is going to be a mainstay is not. And I think that was very well done because they gave you, I guess, if you think about it throughout the whole episode, they give you clues and expeditions. Like they explain things if you think about it throughout so that you as an audience, as you said, understand the world and you know what's coming. Like if you think about it, this whole episode, they explained what was coming in the next scene or the next couple mm-hmm. of scenes. But obviously that's just to build this world. It's a, it's a two-part opener. So as it mm-hmm. goes on, it's very clear that they don't have to explain stuff like that. If you make sense, like you now know the law, like you said, you know how to kill a vampire. They gave you the options and how they could die. And that the fact that they can die and through more than one means, which means that they mm-hmm. have weakness and it's not just a slayer. As a human, mm-hmm. you can kill them. It's just, you know, the it's harder to kill a vamp if you're a human. Yeah. Yeah, and that, like, because that was, that was kind of a, a good thing as well, because the way they set it up, I was constantly wondering, is, like, can humans kill vampires? And then I'm glad we kind of got the answer that, like, no, it's not because she's a slayer that the methods that she's using works for her. It would work for anyone. It would just obviously be more difficult. And you mm. would almost have to take them by surprise, which we saw Willow and uh, Xander being able to do successfully. But like about that as well, I love the fact that the deaths weren't like very straightforward. Like, yeah. you know, Willow's was, I think, the most predictable. Um, but even still, the fact that it was Willow doing it was what added the unpredictability factor. Yeah. Um, and then I just, I loved it, the fact that he stayed with himself. <laughs> but, you know, if you think about it, you that you feel you kind of want to, you laugh obviously because it's such a good movie, but you also feel so bad for Jesse because he's still at the end of the day, like the, the girl ran into him and then he staked himself on it. Like not even through he, his own means does he go out. It's by someone else in the end. Like it kind of remains that idea of the loser. Like, no matter what he does, this is such a brilliant comedic moment to have in such a serious part. Be like, oh, Jesse. Like, oh, Jesse. And watching you laugh about it was such a joy because it really got you, really tickled you. Because I guess, like, just seeing it happen, it was like, of all things to happen, that's how he goes out. It was just, it was so good. And then I liked, um, because I liked Buffy's resourcefulness um as well but it's also it was so good because number one the the setup of this guy's clearly not that smart because if he had been he would not have like he would not have been the one to focus on her he would have continued feeding while everyone else took care of her um 
And just a couple of things that he did show that he wasn't smart. So the fact that she kind of like picked up on that and used it against him was just was so good. Um, and then I like the fact that they kind of like introduced him as the the main villain um, mm. for for the episode because they did like they built it up in the first one where it's like okay this is actually going to be a challenge for her because mm. it's this guy. And then the fact that they made him the guy, it was just, I like that. That was just a nice touch. Something I really appreciated watching uh, watching you watch was that you picked up on his lack of intelligence because you were pointing out very logical things by going, well, why doesn't he get other people to do this, to do that? And then you see the outcome of you asking those questions and thinking those things is him being staked because of the sunlight, which was clear that he had not been there that long. But it had been... Yeah like brought up and you picked up on it very quickly that he's just not very intelligent but the shocking fact that he was taken out so soon considering how strong he fought Buffy the first time they fought and if you think mm. about it how much stronger she was than they fought like she was getting the upper hand on him this time around and mm. I was like okay we can already see how much stronger she gets but also how resourceful and how smart she is mm. you know she thinks at one or two steps ahead and I like, yeah. I like that they're showing how intelligent Buffy actually is. Yeah. And, and the thing is also, it doesn't feel contrived. They built it up from the first episode. So a lot of it, I feel like really um, mm. just works because they build it up. Um, and the fact that they build it up is appreciated. So did you pick up on the title of the show? Because they mentioned it several times. Yeah, the I know, the hell boss. They, nope, they... that's not that's not what this episode is called. Welcome to the Hellmouth is episode one. Oh. Would you like to know uh... the title of episode two? Will it spoil something that happens in episode three? No. It's just that it's just that okay. it was referenced about someone will be able to help us about six or seven times, I think. The harvest. Oh yes. They referenced that so many times, and all I could think of is until you know the episode title, which as you know, you're not going to know until you've watched the episode, mm. but it's so on the note. They say it six or seven times, and all I could think of in that moment is, wow, I didn't realise, obviously, watching all these years, how many times they say it in just one episode, because mm. it, I know why they're doing it. It's because it's the it's the, it's like the opener, the two-parter, so they're trying to explain everything in these two episodes so that you understand the rhythm of the show and what's going on, but it was the amount of times they said, the harvest, harvest, the harvest. I was like, okay like they are making sure to puncture it in mm. no pun with the vamps puncture it in consistently throughout this episode that you're like oh they keep talking about the harvest of course and then you find out the title of the sequence i just thought it was like, very much because it like i said it's, it's the first two episodes really in there because i'm not they're not going to do it like that they're not going to say it 20 times in all episodes but it is a clear structure that you were speaking about before that they have and that includes putting the episode title in their dialogue several times but I mean, I think it helps because it wasn't it, like a lot of the times the people who said it wasn't the same person. Yeah. Because we had Giles saying it and we had Angel saying it. So like it kind of helps that it's, um, you know, the the person who says it varies. So it doesn't feel that awkward where if it was the same person saying it over and over again, it would just be it would become the dude sh saying Shakespeare yeah. on the stage, you know? Luke, Luke, yeah. I think that's the Luke. beauty of the writing as well. No, it's okay. It's hard to remember names. You have to remember, I've seen this show so many times, I remember the names. But that's the beauty in the writing, though, is that several people said it. So that way, it doesn't click in your mind unless you've watched the show multiple times to be like, oh, yeah. So for you, you hear it, you don't think anything of it. You're just like, oh, it's a reference. Then someone else mentions it, but you think it's another person. So you don't think back to the first person who said it. And that's what's so beautiful about this writing and so smart that they could put something so obvious in it, but it doesn't click because, as you said, so many people said it. So you don't think of, oh, they're saying the same thing or the same two words or the same word. Instead, it's paced out between the whole episode that you're so invested in everything else going on that you don't pick up on it and I think that's very smart writing yeah what did you think of Xander in this episode because I did notice you got a bit frustrated with him at points I mean I generally tend to get frustrated with people who like 
act before they think, uh, or like who who um, listen to very sound advice and then just go ahead and ignore it. Um, but also, I think I have to keep in mind that they're teenagers, uh, mm. and teenagers do tend to kind of like not click with the seriousness of the situation. And I th- think he can also be excused because, as he said himself, a part of him is kind of like not still not believing that yeah. th- it, there's a real threat for like a decent part of the um, the the episode. So it's fair. Uh, but I can't help myself. I'm like, no, no, no. I The coward in me just doesn't understand why you're doing this. But I honestly do, like, I do get it because when you do watch it, at least when the first time I watched it, I was so frustrated with Xander. I was like, you've got to stay out of a Slayer's business. You know, this is what she does and, you, and you're going to get hurt. But then if you think about it, it's a good thing he didn't listen and he went with the, I guess the non running away the hero sides of him because if it wasn't for him being there imagine what could have happened to buffy because she would have gone down there by herself she, she was trapped mm. and then when you think about it there was a vampire able to grab her if it wasn't for xander pulling her away what could have happened she could have been dragged back mm. down and captured yeah. so it's a nice little moment because you get frustrated with him and then you think oh mm. hold on did he actually help mm. and also like the the thing is it's just it's more that thing of you don't know where their capabilities lie until they're they show it to you and i think once Mm. they started showing it it helped calm me down a little bit um because like i think also the frustration was there go he's like trying to charge in there where when he seems so clueless yeah um and just him like acknowledging i should have bought this i should have bought that at least made me feel like okay he's at least thinking about it it's not just him charging in there um clueless even though Mm. that was it but he's not completely like oh i'm just gonna go and not think about anything and it's gonna be fine um so that helped and also the fact that like once it was established that humans could actually do things it just would be more difficult for them Mm. at least i felt a bit a little bit like okay there's a point to them trying yeah. you know um so that was great now you got to find out creepy guy's name so what do you think of angel this episode well even like um going back to the first episode i started wondering if he would i mean i have no clue about him he seems like he he might be maybe not an angel as on the nose as that name would be and kind of hilarious um but like he did seem a little bit like he might be some kind of supernatural being because he seems very um removed from the world like when she was like you don't have any friends and then noted that was not supposed to be a question to stump you so clearly something has kind of kept him from mingling with people in just a normal way. The way he speaks also seems very stilted, like he's learning how to language. Um, learning how to so, <laughs> so, so like, which throws the, the mysterious way that he was speaking before into like a very different light, yeah. in my opinion. Um, so I, I like the potential with him, but also there's a small part of me that wonders if he's going to be one of those characters, like Charmed had a character like that as well, where you never quite know if they're on your side or not. Like, sometimes they will be, sometimes Which they character? won't be. Um, oh, goodness, I can't remember. I, I, I just vaguely remember him from... Don't um, care? Two. Yes, and I think he plays in he's the lead in Nip and Tuck. Oh yeah, you're talking about Cole. Who yeah, he's played yeah, yes. that's his name in Charmed. Yeah, Cole. I've watched all the episodes of Charmed, so I yeah, I have him on DVD oh. in, in my house. Um yeah, that was yeah, Cole. It's just when you were saying I was like, oh, because his name's Julian in real life, he's an Australian. Yeah, I was like, I, I know who she's talking about. Um he, what I he... liked Okay, well, Sorry, he, he kind of gives me that kind of vibe okay. where it's like there, there might be things where 
at the start he looks or like not at the start but like at certain points he looks at like a villain and then things get explained it's like okay maybe he's not um maybe he is actually well-intentioned you know that kind of uncertainty Hmm. throughout i think something i appreciated that they did with him is he wasn't actually in this episode a lot was he if you think about it Mm -mm. he kind of comes in when buffy's in the mausoleum and then kind of gives her a little clue and a little bit of help and you're and kind of adds to his mystique you're like okay that's a bit like how do i take this moment and what i also liked was that he kind of arrived at the end of it all all, the vampires are running away he's like oh she actually succeeded which clearly shows that he did he actually ever believe in her at that point but also the fact that he comes right at the end so he like we don't even know if he could have helped or what would have happened to him if he had come so i like that there was that moment when you look and you go you turn up at the end like you just because it looks like he just comes, like he kind of looks like he might come to yeah. help, but then it's already finished. And you're like, oh, so what would you have done? Yeah, which to me is like, adds to the 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 small part of my brain that's like, is he a guardian angel? But then the name, the name is so like, you know, so. You uh, never know though, you never know. Yeah, so it's just, it's interesting as well, because um, I like the fact that he kind of gave himself an out with the, um, I'm scared because you don't know if he's actually scared if he's pretending to be mm. a coward because for some reason he can't interfere like there's a lot of mystery even around the way he's approaching and saying things um, and and it, it's it's interesting because he could just be being honest but he could also just be a lot smarter than his language is giving him credit for that is very true and that, that's why I like these openers because it's only two episodes so you have no clue about these people like we obviously we know the core groups we know elements of their personalities because it's shown but you still don't know someone you know we have still several episodes to go in this season and I like that he's such a mystery because I'd rather he was a mystery than for us to just know everything about him in these two episodes because Mm -hmm. then it goes what and for you what do you think they could do with his character and what are the questions you have inside your head that you hope get answered mm. and that, that's that's um, general question for you yeah no i like i i genuinely like that as well it just because it's not like you don't just want the the bad guys to be a mystery that could be very frustrating the fact mm. that we have someone who seems to kind of be on our side but he's also mysterious is good um because i feel like then at least there's this potential hidden trump card on the the good side and not just potential hidden trump cards on the bad side Mm. um so that's nice and also like small thing that i appreciated that maybe i'm reading too much into but i like the fact that suddenly buffy's like totally okay with hunting vampires again and it makes total sense to me at least because i'm like she has friends now that's all she's she's been worried about like that i feel like that's a big thing of why she was so resistant to being a a vampire all the all the dangerous side but like the she was worried about about her social life and how her being the strange kid would Mm. affect her social life so the fact that she now has two friends who know about her secrets and they're okay with it makes sense why a part of her resistance to like being a slayer would calm down I do like that instead of having the characters run away, they have them like try to compartmentalize it, but also not to know how to deal with the situation, but not run mm. away from her. So there, there is this backing that she has because I can you can only imagine what it would be like to be a slayer, like, like the loneliness. Because like who yeah. can you tell? Because if you tell someone, you put them in danger. They found out their own way, and instead of running away, they either sat down. Or you know helped out, yeah. and I like I really uh, like that because it shows it mm. shows that these characters are willing to be there for her, which you know it could yeah. have been the complete opposite. Yeah, and I think it also like is uh, is nice because I feel like maybe I'm b- being too general, but most this only works as well as it does because they're teenagers. Teenagers have an amazing capacity for like adapting and accepting mm. 
um, that adults don't generally have. Um, so I feel like that's why I'm also like not phased by the way that they're so accepting of it. Um, yeah. Whereas like uh, adults might also accept it, but they will also have a midlife crisis about it along the way. Uh, so. Well, before we wrap up, because obviously we need to go, I was curious, something for you and the audience. I'm very curious, how many people do you think it would have taken, minus the Slayer, for Luke to have drained, for the Master to be have, to be freed? That's always a question I've always been curious about, because we saw at least two people that he killed. I wonder how many more it would have actually taken for him to be free. I mean, I would say... a. A decent amount because otherwise if it had just been like say 10 they could have easily just dragged them to the um to the underground tunnels and and not risked the the publicness of it all you know but i also have to think i don't think these vampires at this particular moment are the brightest so they probably wouldn't have thought logically like you do I mean, I would assume that even if they're not the brightest, he might be, like the master himself might be. But it's good because... he made a reference to say, he made a reference to saying uh, almost, you know, he, he was implying that he was almost free. So that's why I was very curious, because obviously we never know, because as you know, he's still trapped, thankfully. Um, but, so there's always a curious thing makes... there. Mm, but I wonder then, because um, like I, I mentioned the, the idea of like, Buffy's blood being potentially being more powerful because she's the slayer. Now you gotta wonder, like maybe the souls also carry different weights depending on how pure they are, because they did make a reference to Jesse being having quite like pure blood. Um, yeah, because he was a virgin. Yeah. So so like then does it like does that make a difference as well? Like maybe one person's blood carries more weight than another, so he might have thought he was closer, but then the rest of the blood isn't as pure as some of the others, and then you know it would take longer. These are all good thoughts and theories to have because obviously I'm not going to tell you anything. So what you have to do is watch more episodes to find out if you're right or wrong. But yeah, I also liked that it gave you a few jump scares uh, so that you, and I saw you get really invested. I saw you laughing, smiling. Also, I liked the fact that you were like, Cordelia can't die in this moment. You know, they they kind of gave you that fear of, are they going to kill another core member of this Yeah, show? and I mean, they could, as you mentioned, Jesse died, so they could have. Um, I was just like, I don't think, uh, even though they could have, and it would have, like, I wouldn't have uh, felt like, bam, they made a mistake. How dare they, you know? It wouldn't have been that. But because they built her up so much, I also just was resistant to the thought of her her dying because, like, damn, I put I put a lot of emotion into Cordelia as a character already, and we're only in the the second episode. Um, okay, everyone. So that was our discussion about episode two, The Harvest. Is there any final thoughts or questions or theories or anything you want to say, Janu? Um. No, I'm pretty much at MC. I do want to mention, because j- just in case it wasn't clear already, we're definitely going to be continuing until at least episode 12, now that we know that there's interest. Um, but uh, I, yeah, I'm excited. Okay, thank you everyone for watching. We had a lot of fun, and we will see you for episode three. Ciao.